Welcome to the Spotlight presentation called Simple Parallel Programming with Patterns and OmniThread Library. My name is Primoz Gabrielcic and I'm a long-time Delphi programmer, working with Embarcadero, CodeGear and since before that with Borland Tools since Delphi 1 and before Windows programming came along since Turbo Pascal 3. You can contact me on Twitter at DelphiGeek, via Skype at GABR42, or you can read more of my ramblings on my blog, The Delphi Geek. For more information, surf to my info page, primos.gabrielcic.org, or just Google me. I repeat this information at the end, so there's no need for panically writing it down. I also give you links to the presentation and all the demo programs used in the presentation. But now, as the time is short, let's move on. Today's topic is parallel programming, or as I like to call it, the art of doing multiple things at the same time. Imperative word here is art. Parallel programming is hard. It takes a lot of practice to do it effectively, and while I'll show you today how to make it simpler, it still won't fall into the same category as drop a button on a forum programming. So, if parallel programming is hard, what's the motivation for doing it? It's very simple. In the past 10 years, the raw speed of CPU did not increase very much. Instead of that, processors are just getting more and more parallel cores. So to fully use a processor, we therefore must run programs in a parallel fashion. There are many different scenarios where parallel programming can be useful. For example, if we want to execute a long operation, we don't want it to block the user interface. So we would like to run it in parallel with the graphical user interface. Same goes for communication if it's not written in a non-blocking mode. On general, we would like to execute slow synchronous APIs, so APIs where the call only returns when an operation is complete in the background. Other two scenarios deal less with user interface blocking and more with the raw power we can get from a computer. When processing large quantities of data, we would like to distribute processing over all available cores and with that speed up the processing. Similarly, when we are writing servers, we would like to process requests from multiple clients in parallel. As you can see, there are many reasons for writing parallel code. The only, and I'm using air quotes here around the only, question now is what tool to use to write it. Traditionally, we were all writing parallel programs by using the T-Thread class, which is part of Delphi since version 2. In recent years, however, we've seen a big shift in all programming communities from thread-oriented to task-oriented parallel programming. The difference here is big, but entirely conceptual. It mostly represents a change in thinking. While the thread represents an execution environment for a parallel code, a task is just a code that has to be executed. When we are dealing with tasks, we don't care about the plumbing, how the parallel world is set up, what has to happen for a parallel job to be done, and so on, but just about the effect. We are effectively telling the runtime library, I want you to do so and so, and in parallel, and we don't care how that is achieved. This focus shift happened in the .NET world with the Task Parallel Library, while in Delphi the first concept of tasks was introduced, I think, by the OmniThread Library in Delphi 2007, and with Parallel Programming Library in XC7. When you write to write an effective and especially bug-free parallel code, the task-oriented programming is still too low level. So many modern parallel workflows are therefore moving to even a higher level of abstraction, to parallel programming patterns. They typically represent building blocks, which solve some common problems. For example, Delphi X7 introduced patterns for future or function calculation in background for parallel for loop and join, while OmniThread library brings other patterns, async, parallel for, okay, there's the same one, uh, pipeline, map, background worker, fork join, and so on and so on. And a note here, while OmniThread library supports Delphi 2007, high-level patterns only work in Delphi 2009, and even that with some limitations in Delphi 2009 and 2010. So you need at least Delphi XA to fully appreciate OmniThread library patterns. So with that intro, <coughs> let's switch to the first demo. I'll show you how to use the simplest of all OmniThread library patterns, the async await. 
Let's take a look at this typical old-fashioned application. A form, a button, and some workload that blocks the user interface. Something lots of us have inherited or even written over the years. Let's run this program first. One button, and when I click it, it starts working something, and I cannot move the form around. You all know that. And only after the operation has, fini has finished, I can click it again, do some more work. I will not at the moment. Uh, this code is simplified to the point of being a stupid demo. The code just sets the caption, disables the button, does some work, which is represented by a five second slip, and enables the button at the end. So you have inherited this ugliness and clients are living happily with it, mostly because they don't know better. But then a pointy haired boss comes around and says, hey, we need a new version of the software and we need it to be three times faster. We promised that to the customer. So we have to do three times as much processing at the same time. And no, oh, I don't like that I can't minimize the app while it is processing the data. It's taking valuable screen space from my solitaire. Hmm. What to do? What to do? So given the topic of this presentation, the solution is clear. Move everything, so I mean every processing, to the background. Then we can start three workers at the same time, plus the user interface won't be blocked anymore. And the problem, if you look at the code, is that we have three, three parts. One that modifies the user interface, then we have the worker code, and then the termination code, which again modifies the user interface. And one must never, never modify the user interface from a thread. Never. If you remember one topic from the presentation, it let be this. You should never, never, never access or modify user interface from a background thread. Never. We can, can do some part of modification very easily with the T-thread. We could, for example, leave this code alone, move the work processing into a T-thread, then set up termination handler and uh, enable button back at that point. But there's an easier way. We can use Omnithread library and async await pattern which is which was just designed for this purpose so let's first install omnitread thread library since i'm using xc8 i can call get it start typing omni as you can see omnitread library is available here thanks to embarcadero people so I can just click install, agree. Omnitread library is available with OpenBSD license, so you can use it in the commercial applications without any problems. You don't even have to thank me. You can just silently use it. So it's installed now. Let me switch back to my demos group and do the change. So async await takes <coughs> two worker pieces of code. The general syntax is like this. Async and I pass in some code which will be executed in the background thread and then I say dot await and pass in some other code which is executed in the main thread after this background thread finish, finishes executing. And this code can be a method, a procedure, or an anonymous method. So I can first, of course, I have to start using Omnitrade library. We'll use OTL parallel unit, which contains high level patterns. I can leave this part unchanged, except I will not need update anymore. You'll see why. Then I call async and push the work method into background and await so on termination I can run some asynchronous method which will enable my button again that's it so this will start work in background 
and when it terminates it will enable user interface again and the whole set of instructions whole call async await executes in a very small amount of time then the code proceeds exits the button click and the VCL application uh, still processes messages, reacts to user interface and so on and so on. That's why we don't need to call update because button will be updated automatically. So if I run this and click on do work, I can see now that I can move the window around, I can minimize the application, I can start it again so on and so on. If I look at the thread status I see that I have a worker here and the moment is idle because my background task is not working anymore. If I click do more work it will start working again with my parallel.async pattern. So that was the part one push everything in background so the pointy haired boss can play solitaire on the screen uh, and to do three times more work well we can use the same event handler but first I will change it a little so it will not refer to button one but to some generic button and this button will get from the sender We have now event handler which can be called from different user interface elements so I can just make a copy of this button. I'm doing Ctrl C, Ctrl V for copy paste. All three buttons are pointing to the same code. So if I run this now and I will put thread status some visible place can start one task, I can start another task, and the third task, now I have two workers running, I can start them when they finish, I can have three of the, at the same time, managed by three threads and so on. So let's now do a short overview of other omnitrade library pat parallel patterns. We've seen the async await already. Async without the await is just a variation of that pattern which with more configurability. Then there's a future which allows you to execute a function returning some result in a background thread and access that result later from a main thread. The for each and for patterns are two variations of the parallel for statement. We've s we'll see that today, later. Join allows you to execute multiple background operations and wait for all of them to finish execution. And by the way, the last three, Future 4 and Join, closely match the patterns with the same name in Delphi's parallel programming library. Then there's the parallel task pattern, which is a variation of Join that executes the same task in multiple copies on multiple background threads. The last four are specialized patterns that help solving very specific tasks. Pipeline helps you write parallel tasks where processing can be organized in overlapping stages. The background worker is an implementation of a client server processing model where you prepare a work item and schedule it to a server which can itself run on one or more, or more threads. The full join implements a parallel version of a divide and conquer algorithm. We can, for example, use it to write a parallel quicksort. And the newest on this list is a map pattern. It takes a set of data stored in an array of some type, T1, then runs it through a, ma through a mapping slash filtering function and creates another potentially smaller array of two, some type to T2 which can be the same as T1 or a different type. And of course it does that in parallel. So let's now see a few of those patterns in practice and let's start with the last one, with the map. I have here a simple example. It initializes some array of integers, numbers is T array of integer, and then runs in a typical serial fashion some mapping function over it. This mapping function does two things. First, 
it selects some values. For example, it will return true for odd numbers and false for even numbers. And those numbers which are selected for which the result is true are also converted. For example, in this case, they are converted from integer to string. And only the selected numbers, those for which the mapping function returns true, are then included in the output array. And at the end, show results is called to show our result, the result of the processing. As the source array contains numbers from one, one to a million, uh, there's no special surprise that we get as a result 500,000 odd values from 1 to 999999. And of course, the code does that fairly quickly. But still, I will show you how to write a parallel version because, in a <coughs> more general case, you will not be working with a simple and quick mapping function but with, with something which takes lots of time. So the starting and ending part of this parallel version is just the same as previous but and that may be surprising for parallel processing we only need one line we we'll just say odds so result in array is parallel dot map and we are mapping integer to string and for source we are taking numbers and this is our mapping function and of course we need OTL parallel yes. it took some time because debugger stopped, stops the cred, thread creation significantly so if, if I run this without debugger It will be very quick, and if I run this with debugger, we can see that many, many threads are created. By default, all cores in the machine, and my machine has 24 cores, are used for processing. And next time I click it, they're just reused. And by the way, most parallel patterns in Omnitree library are very flexible and can be configured in different ways. For example, I can modify this example to use a more complicated version of parallel.map so I can set uh, parallelism, so how many cores it will, ru it will run on to some other value. For example, I can make it run only on four cores. Then I need a different syntax take numbers as a source, execute mapping function, and return the result. If I run this now, again show the thread status, we'll see that only four workers were activated. So in the, for the third trick and last trick of the, of the day, I will show you the very, very powerful pattern called Parallel 4, which allows you to easily convert some for loop into a parallel for loop, which will then run on either or on all cores in the system or on some subset of cores similar with the map patterns you can configure it. I have here a very, very stupid serial code with checks how many prime numbers are there from one to some high constant, three million and something, and it runs very slow function is prime to detect primality. I could of course turn it into a much faster Eratosthenes prime, but then I wouldn't have such a nice demo. And if I run this, oops, wrong button, <coughs> I will see that there are, it takes some time, Two, 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 two primes from one to some very specially selected number so that I got nice result. Let's try this in parallel. I will just take everything from this event handler, copy, double click, paste. I will convert this into parallel so I will change this for into parallel for by using forming syntax parallel dot 
4 from 1 to C high and then in this for execute some anonymous function Oops. which takes a loop parameter and I can leave everything else as in, as is. So let's run this in parallel. That's it basically. And I get well that's not two 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 two. What's happening here? Let's run it again. That's some other number. Again, another number. Okay, I must admit uh, this is scripted and prepared and not my mistake. I wanted to show you the danger of using a shared data. Shared in this example is this num primes variable, which is now being accessed for mul from multiple threads at the same time. And this is, as you, as you saw, not a good idea because increment then doesn't work correctly. But I, I, I could, for example, add locking here. Something like lock acquire, lock will release, where, ro where lock is a critical section, uh, of course begin end and so on and so on. But that would slow down the program very much. I, I would rather change this to a something called iOmni counter, which is a thread safe counter, so it can be accessed from multiple threads at the same time without any problem. Create counter, initial value 0 works for us, ok. And here I will just use numprimes.increment and to get the value I have to use dot value. So now, oh, of course not c high dot value but numprimes primes dot value now I get two to two to two two and I get it every time. And similarly, like before I could for example say number of tasks three or I can set some other parameters. There's lots of things parallel four can do, but we don't have time to go into that any deeper. Sadly, that will have to do for today, as we have very limited time. If you liked what you saw, go to www.omnitradelibrary.com where you'll find links to additional documentation, different blog articles, webinars and to the ebook Parallel Programming with Omnitrad Library. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly on the Google Plus community, Omnitrad Library or on Stack Overflow, where you should tag your question with the Omnitrad Library tag. There are also many demos included with the Omnitrade library. If you have installed it via Gedit, you'll find them in the My Documents folder. So go to My Documents, Embarcadero, Studio, Version Number, Catalog Repository, Omnitrade library, and here you will find the full installation, including the Tests folder, which contains many demos. The presentation and demo code for today is available on my blog, the Delphi Geek. Click on the presentations button in the upper right corner and you will reach the page with all my presentations, slides and demo code and so on. You'll also find additional presentations on multi-trading here. For example, this Daypack session from the last year. That is all. Thank you very much for listening. And now to questions and answers. Okay, David, I here. Let me bring Primotion. Okay. <coughs> Primos, are you there? Hello. Hello. I Excellent. am here. Yeah, Richard says uh, fantastic seminar. Um, Thank you. Q and A. Um, I had a few questions up front, and then I'll everyone I'll get to the questions as well. Um, you mentioned that you know you can use as many processor cores as your application wants to start different uh, parts of OmniThread libraries. The way to control how many threads uh, are actually going to be used? Yes, with <coughs> sorry, with all parallel patterns, you can control 
how many threads there, there will be used. So there was a demo for pipeline, but well, most of them support some syntax where you say you want, I want to use that and that number. Of course, there are some like uh, async where there is always only one background task, so there's no much sense in limited <coughs> on how many cores it will run. Excellent. Um, is this Windows only or is it uh, agnostic about the underlying operating system? Uh, at the moment it's on Windows only and besides that it's VCL only. Okay, it will run in a console application and it will run as a service but due to some message dispatch issues it will not run in a FireMonkey application and it will not run on OS X, uh, Android and iOS but currently there's lots of work being done on that. Uh, a guy, Sean Durkin, appeared and said he wants to adapt Omnitrade library for all operating systems so he's actively working on that now and he's making a very good progress. We have a branch in the GitHub named Mobile where this is <clears throat> going on so you can check the progress there and I think somewhere until uh, at the end of this year we will be able to run at least demos and test applications on all operating systems supported by Delphi but at that moment this is a Windows only as platform or framework Okay, I know you mentioned, I, I think if I go to the this Omnithread library page, maybe that's not the right one anymore. Yeah, that's that's the old one. So the new one is omni omnithreadlibrary.com. This one is still alive, yes, but obsolete. Okay. If I can get to the right one. Okay. So this one. All right, great. And so then I'll put that in the chat window and I'll copy the GitHub address and put that in the chat window for everyone as well. Thanks. I probably... Yes, there's GitHub. Okay, so if I go, okay, great. And then just a couple more from me. Uh, Delphi only, right? Or is there somebody playing with uh, using this uh, in C++, at least parts of it, because of some of the stuff we're doing? Well, uh, I see no reason why it should not work from C++. It's just I never tested it. So uh, everything is done with pure <clears throat> Delphi, RTL, and some uh, Windows calls, but C++ or C++ in Rad Studio can compile all of this. So, And then somebody will probably ask, maybe it's there. Um, oh, uh, Laszlo says hello from Hungary. Hello. Yeah, he's in the Q&A log. And, uh, if I already have some threaded code in some of my applications, can I mix and match using OmniThread library for new code, for example, and yeah. some thread they can yeah, Yes, yes, without any problems. So at the bottom, everything is implemented with Delphi's T-thread, so it's all compatible. And then there's a question there. What do you suggest to simulate the T-thread synchronize? Uh, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, you, you cannot do synchronize with Omnithread library because very. I'm very very much against blocking calls like this. Uh, you can do ttread.q, so you can push something to the main thread without waiting for the execution, and there's a syntax for that called task.invoke uh, would be a bit too much to explain it here at the moment but if you contact me after the this webinar on Google Plus or directly I'll show you how to do that. Okay great. Um, let's see, oh um, I, I really liked, and I think it relates to what you were just talking about, your slide there, never, never, ever uh, access the UI from a background thread. And I think... Yeah, never. 
edit it with never. I thought that was just really, really good. There's a place for UI code. There's a place for all your logic. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, oh, and I knew this question was coming, and Richard asked it. Um, have you tested all this with uh, Red with Delphi 10 Seattle? Uh, I did few very limited tests, and everything is working fine. I'm not expecting any problems. Uh, over this weekend, I will be preparing packages and project files for Delphi 10 and testing everything. So. I think in the beginning of the next week you can expect an official release which will officially support Delphi 10 but as it is this moment if you get the latest version from the GitHub it should work. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Here's a question. It's it's related to UML, yeah, and I'm not sure if you if you do much with UML. There's, there's a question about whether or not there's a UML diagram for displaying parallel programming and separate threads. I don't remember. Uh, there are some diagrams, not really UML, but uh, well, in <coughs> custom format. <laughs> Uh, in my book, so if you get the parallel programming with Omnitrade library, each introduction of each parallel pattern also has a diagram which shows how the threads are created and so on, but nothing formal and nothing uh, following the UML standard. Let's see, I'm not sure if I'm, am I getting, oh, there's the link. I'll put that link in the, to the yeah, book. Yeah, you can put I this on one. That window. And there's by the book, read the version. Okay. Yeah, Great. this article is three years old, but I'm updating it regularly. So whenever something is published to the book, this old article is also updated. So it's a good starting point. Um, well, it's a question. I, I, th I th it's, it's talking about uh, in an application that uh, is fetching data from a database, for example, mm -hmm. the pr parallel program to do that work is good to have two levels of threading, one for the database access and then one for scanning some external other external resources. I would say it completely depends on your application. So if your app spends lots of time in scanning for external resources, then you should put it in a thread also. Same goes for the database, but uh, threading always, always brings in complications, so there are no hard rules to follow here. I am doing database from threads and <clears throat> Typically, it's the best. The way the best approach you can have is just to isolate everything. Uh, use very specific interfaces inside your code, and then your code doesn't care that much how something is implemented internally, and you you can then just push it in a background or not, depending on your needs. So. Is it a remote possibility to drive the UI via different threads on Windows, or does the operating system itself place or have such a limitation? No, Windows allows application to access UI from more than one thread. It's just VCL, which was not written with that in mind and doesn't expect this to happen, and uh, so you cannot do it. So if you if you write a Windows application from scratch, you can easily manipulate different parts of of the application from different threads. Yeah. But just just not using VCL, and I think not using FireMonkey. I didn't check that part yet. Yes. And so everyone, I also put the GitHub link in the chat window, but it's also linked just on off the omnithreadlibrary.com site, right up in the first paragraph, you can see it there. So uh, all of that is in the chat window, and those are the questions that have shown up right now. Uh, we're past the half hour, but uh, 
but we're here. Any any last words of wisdom and advice, Primoš, before we end this uh, spotlight? Um, yeah, don't do parallel programming. <laughs> <laughs> As weird as it is, it may sound, uh, or at least don't do it for the sake of parallel programming. Do it only to solve a problem which you cannot solve in any other way, because it will always bring in many problems uh, which you will not expect in advance. So <clears throat> when, whenever you bring in parallel programming, your code will work faster at the end, but it will take two to ten times longer than you expect it and it will make you lots of gray hair so use it sparingly. See any way to do a load from file inside of a task he's got some code that looks like he's loading a style from a file for example um, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to load from a file uh, Oh no problems there you can load from a file of course Okay, let's see. Uh, there's a thanks a lot for all the great work on OTL. And you had mentioned earlier that uh, someone is working on uh, OmniThread library so that it can be cross-platform, right? In the GitHub, maybe there's a separate uh, branch, is that right? Yes, there's a separate branch in the GitHub uh, named mobile. There's a fork of this branch, uh, I don't know where, somewhere, and there's especially there's a Google Plus group named OmniThread Library Dash Mobile uh, where this is discussed. So <clears throat> there's an active development going on. And if somebody needs more detail, just contact me. I'll, be, I'll try to post a link here into the chat. Okay. At least a link to the Google group. Oh, and Davis was saying, well, if he sets the style by loading it from a resource, that sort of affects the UI. Yeah, then there we are at the point where you should not access UI from a background thread. <laughs> yep, you made so, that very clear. Never, 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 yeah. never, never. Never, never. Loading is fine, but... Uh, Applying this style, that's a completely different story. Just typing frantically. Uh, another thank you for simple and clear examples. Yeah, just go out to, to for XZ8. If you have XZ8, go out to get it. And Primoz said he is working on the uh, 10 Seattle version, and we'll make sure to get that. Uh, well, you can go to the GitHub when it's done, right? And, and we'll get that in get it for, for 10 Seattle. Is that right? Primoz? Yeah, definitely. Actually, it is now already available in Get It for the 10th Seattle, but it's using the old XC8 packages. Uh, no harm comes from that, but it's not pretty. So we'll fix that too. And there's a new version around the corner, so it will be available very soon now in both XC8 and 10 via Get It. So. Just stay tuned. Okay, so there's a, there's a question. Uh, Eric's putting this in. Is it available for XZ6? And and on the OmniThread here, let me turn on the OmniThread homepage. I yeah, it works that. from 2007 yeah. onwards. So that answers your question. So 2007. Can I use create process with OmniThread library? Oh, uh, sure. It's just a Windows API and you can call it from any thread. It will start a new process, but yes, of course. Uh, oh, so here we go. Here's the, a good question. And you, you sort of had some words of wisdom earlier today for this as well. What other newbie errors would you warn against when starting with OmniThread library? <laughs> they like, don't use it. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't use it. <clears throat> it will make your life harder. Uh, <laughs> well, don't use multi-trading at all. But sometimes you have to, so that's not an option. Uh, the most, I think the best advice I could give to anybody is 
to rethink the interfaces that you are using inside your program. Um, this can be the true interface definitions of just APIs which you are using internally. If you have a well-organized program with well-defined points where something is calling something else and it is very well known how the result is coming back and so on and so on, then it's usually quite simple to convert to any kind of parallel code, being T-Thread or Omnithread library or something else. But if you're using spaghetti code, if it's a mess of different uh, layers coming from histories, that is something you won't be able to, to parallelize until you make put some sense into the code. So organized code better parallelism, messy code, uh, very unhappy life. And once you have that, mm, the main trick is to minimize access to shared resources. So as we could see in the four example, whenever you are accessing something from all threads or from, from multiple threads, this will cause you problems. So try to put a program into small modular parts with as little interaction between them as possible. That would be probably my advice. Yeah, there were a few people who are asking, and you covered some of this in the presentation in one of your slides uh, about differences between the parallel programming library that we ship versus OmniThread library. And I was going to put a few of things like uh, 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 pipelines and fork and but if you do you want to go through a, just a high level few things that are in addition to having a task or a parallel for for example the basic approach in both is quite the same so we are putting uh, a wrapper around t-thread which allows you to work with tasks in both libraries so uh, Parallel programming library has T-Task and OmniTread library has a different low level approach which I did not discuss today. So you can work with the task abstraction and both have the pattern abstraction on top of the task. And let's say parallel programming library comes with four, uh, sorry, with future and parallel for and join and Tommy Thread Library comes with uh, some eight, seven or eight more abstractions or patterns. And the biggest difference I think is that Omni Thread Library is very much built on top of a messaging. So the basic communication between tasks is to send message from one task to another. This is not that much visible when, we, when you are working with patterns, because most of that is hidden from you, but it comes, it becomes very important when you want to send something back to the main form, when you want to communicate with a low-level task and so on. So I think the life with Omnitred Library is easier on general. Uh, because some things are taken care of which you have to program by yourself with the parallel library. But on the other hand, you are limited to Windows for the moment. So if you need multi-OS support, the only good way to go is the parallel programming library. So both have their pluses and minuses. Yep. I probably didn't do the answer justice but uh, in typing, but that's sometimes hard. Let's see. Hmm. Um, but you can find all the information on the on the omnithreadlibrary.com site. There's tutorials, FAQ, documentation. You can find all of that, and that's that's on the screen right now with the link. So I'll put that omnithread library uh, in the chat window. That that main page there. And also uh, the Git. Here's the here's the GitHub spot. Okay, and then uh, your Delphi Geek page. 
and then your main page. I'm putting all these in the chat windows, everybody. I know the oh, the, okay. screens are, the screens are flying by, but mm -hmm. uh, all those links you can click on in the chat window. Uh, so that here's the I didn't do the book, so I should go to the book page as well. And that's a work in progress, right? The book. Yes, this is work in progress, but uh, all the green parts here in this uh, image in the middle of the screen are already written, so only a few chapters have yep. to be done. Actually, the miscellaneous part is also done. I have to update this. So really, just the introduction to multi-trading and few appendices are missing from the current plan, but this book was designed to stay a live book, so whenever I update Omnitrade Library, the book will also be updated, and because it's an ebook, every reader, every buyer gets a new version automatically, so it's all free, when you buy it, uh, you have it for all the times with all the updates. Uh, let's see. Uh, advice for uh, for the user interface portion. Uh, should people use things like T-interfaced objects or synchronize? Uh, for updating the user interface, yeah. I believe that is uh, meant. Uh, I usually send messages back to the main forum. And Omnitrade Library has a nice reports for that. So on the task site, you just say task dot invoke and message ID and message data. There are two parameters. And on the forum site, you just define a message handling procedure, like just like if you're doing a Windows messages. So you do procedure blah blah semicolon message that and that and message will be dispatched directly. So this is covered in the book, this is covered in examples and on my blog. And so if you can't find the appropriate topic, leave me a message somewhere, I will send you the links. Yep. And again, all that is on the screen, I believe. There it is. That's on the Primus Gabriel check. I'm going to crucify your name all the time. Much, I'm used to it, don't worry. I, that's why I go by David I. It just makes it much easier. It's like <laughs> than spelling out in tersimony. Okay, um, here's one that always comes up. Application process messages. Yeah, versus don't, call, don't call it from a thread. Yeah, don't call it from a thread. <laughs> You're right, absolutely right. Because then strange things will happen because VCL will be updated from the thread, and we mentioned this that lots of times. So don't do it. For years, just yep. Uh, I think Nick Hodges says don't use it, don't ever use it. There's always better ways. Yep. Yes, there are some very weird scenarios when it's appropriate, but on general, don't use it. Yep. It's oh. a very good advice. Yep, and uh, Danny Wind and others. Whenever we present things, presentations on threads, um, you know everything can work properly. Don't, uh, yeah, don't use it. But on the other hand, uh, if the question implies uh, how can a pseudo pseudo parallel approach, so if you splice everything into small calls and then application the message handling inside the application or or on idle or something like that handles stuff so it looks like parallel then that's perfectly fine can get messy can get complicated but some things can be done that way of course yeah uh, it's a bit too open in the question so to get yeah. any real good comparison here yeah well those are all the questions for today. It's great to have everybody, and thanks, Primoz, for doing that. I know you did some some sort of final thoughts and comments uh, this morning. I didn't know if you had anything additional to add that I would append on the end of those or not, but I'll give you that opportunity if you want. I think we covered uh, most of it already, so nothing else for me today. 
Okay, thank you, Primosh. I look forward to you uh, doing a session at Code Rage um, 10 in October. Uh, everyone, uh, it'll be. Uh, I'm told he's going to. You're going to be doing even a little bit more with a little bit more time in the Code Rage session. So that'll be excellent. Look forward to that. Yeah, I the also... plan is to cover both parallel libraries there. So patterns from parallel programming library and patterns from omniched library, not all of them, but more of the more examples than today. Yep. And then I uh, some oh Reshtang was saying he's when I put up your your main page, uh, he saw Omni XML. Do you want to say a few words about Omni XML? Um, I'm just. Uh, silent partner there. My colleague wrote that library. I wrote a few parts f f that are inside this library, Omni XML, XPath, for example, and but, but I'm just a contributor more or less. Nothing more. And we uh, and we uh, provide Omni XML as well. Yes, it was included in uh, XC7 or XC8, I don't remember quite. I think it was from XC8, one of the XML providers. Yep. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.